Welcome to another episode or another edition of Cheese and Salt. Uh, today, what we're going to make is a cheese, and we're going to make uh, in the style of Toscano Papato. Now, I'm adopting the recipe that I saw on Ricky Carroll's website. And now my adaptations are based on the fact that, one, on the website, they use 10 gallons of milk. I don't have 10 gallons of milk, so I need to adjust the amount of starter that I use uh, and the amount of rennet and things like that. Also, um, I am adding lipase powder to this uh, and calcium chloride. Uh, since they make theirs out of raw milk on the website, they don't need calcium chloride. Uh, and they don't use lipase powder, but I'm using some lipase powder. Uh, so this cheese, Toscano Papato, uh, it's from the Tuscany style, and you can read about it on Ricky Carroll's website. Uh, it's a pepper cheese, and it's a grana style cheese, which means you kind of get the small grains. Uh, you're probably very familiar with other grana style cheeses, Parmesan, Romano, those are grana style cheeses. This is another grana style cheese, except we're not going to take, I'm not going to take as much moisture out of this. So this is only, I only want this cheese to age about four months um, to six months to be ready to eat. If I beat it more and took more moisture out of it uh, and made the grains tighter, it would be able to go for a year in aging. I don't want to wait a year to eat the cheese. Uh, also, uh, we're going to heat this cheese. Now this cheese is going to go to 118 degrees as we heat it up. So it's definitely going to be using thermophilic starter. But this cheese uses both mesophilic starter and thermophilic starter. So the way I'm going to make this cheese is I'm going to use three gallons of milk. I'm using organic Trickling Springs Farm whole milk uh, from Chambersburg, PA. I got it at my local Whole Foods store. This is a cream line milk. It's a low temperature pasteurized milk and it is a cream line milk, meaning it's non-homogenized. So I'm using three gallons of that. I will use a quarter teaspoon of lipase powder, a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride. I will use a quarter teaspoon of TA61, which is my thermophilic starter, and an eighth of a teaspoon of MM100, which is my mesophilic starter. I'm going to let the starter um, come up to about 92 to 94 degrees, and then it's going to culture for basically an hour and a half. After an hour and a half, I'm going to uh, add the rennet. Add enough rennet so that it, the milk will come to a clean break within 20 minutes. Then using a whisk, I'm going to break it into quarter inch pieces. And then I'm going to slowly heat it to 118 degrees. Now, the more I mix it, the more I beat it, the more I, I, I stir it, basically, the more moisture that's going to come out of the curd as, it's, as the temperature is rising. So I'm going to be very gentle in my stirring. I'm going to probably stir once every two to three, maybe even once every five minutes. Now when the, when the milk reaches the temperature of 108 degrees, the curd is going to want to clump together. So that's when I probably will increase my, my time, maybe once every two minutes or so, just to make sure the curd isn't clumping too much. When it reaches 118 degrees, I'm going to take it off the heat, let it sit for five minutes. After sitting for five minutes, I'm going to weigh off, which means I'm going to pour off the whey till it reaches the level of the curds. Then I'm going to put the curds in the cheese mold, a cheese mold lined with cheesecloth. Now this cheese is a pressed cheese. So I will be at that point in time showing you my cheese press, um, which is a sturdy press uh, from Sturdy Press in California and then you're going to press the cheese. Now the idea when you press the cheese, you want to make sure that you get the rind closed. So you start at a very low weight. In this case, I'm just going to press it, press it at 10 pounds. I'm going to press it at 10 pounds on one side for half an hour, flip it, 10 pounds for another half an hour, check it out, take it out, check it to make sure that the rind is closing. Then I'm going to increase the weight to 25 pounds. 25 pounds for half an hour, flip it, another 25 pounds, take it out, and if the rind is closed really well, then we're going to increase the pressure to 50 pounds for 12 hours. Now the way I do my cheese, if you don't want to see lines like we normally get from cheesecloth in the cheese when you press it, after about 8 hours, I'm going to take it, take the, uh, going to take it out of the press, I'm going to take it out of the cheesecloth, I'm going to flip the cheese over, press for another 4 hours, and that should, at 50 pounds, and that should get the uh, lines out of it. Now this cheese, 
we don't add salt to the curd, it's going to brine. And I brine my cheese 12 hours for every pound. So if it's about three and a half pounds, we're going to brine it for about 36 hours. So that's the, the thing that you have to worry about is, is when you don't eat a cheese for four to six months, you're not sure exactly how salty it's going to come out with the brine. Um, and so if it's a little too salty, reduce the brine time. But that's something hard to learn four months down the road. Um, so, you know, that's a just a plain with. You could always just brine it for 24 hours, uh, let's say, and, and see how that tastes. I went, uh, I'm going to go 30 to 36 on this. So I have my, my stuff sterilized. Let me go ahead and start adding the milk. This is the Trickling Springs Farm. It comes in glass bottles. So I'm going to go start adding this. Now, I normally add my starter cultures, calcium chloride, and lipase powder, or my additive, when the milk is around 70 degrees. And yes, I add them all at the same time. Um, you know, you can add certain things later. I don't think it, it hurts to add them all to begin with. Uh, at the same time, they don't interfere with one another. Uh, the starter cultures have their job of consuming the lactic sugar, uh, the lactose, and the calcium chloride's got its job of adding additional calcium to the milk that's been taken out by the pasteurization process. And the lipase powder is an enzyme, uh, and I use sharp lipase powder that's going to add uh, some good flavor, hopefully, to the cheese. Um, you definitely don't have to use lipase powder. Lipase powder is kind of used in feta, uh, it's used in provolones, it's used in parmesan. It adds that kind of bite that's often missing. Definitely in Romano because we make mo Romano usually with cow's milk instead of sheep's milk. And feta, the best feta, is made with sheep's milk, I believe, and not cow's milk. So the lip paste powder is an enzyme to add some sharpness to kind of mimic what comes out of, uh, or the, the amount of lip paste that you would find in sheep's milk. Okay, so we have our milk in. I'm just going to put the lid on and I'll let this come up to temperature and then we're going to add our starter cultures. Okay, my milk has come up to temperature and I'm going to go ahead and add my starter cultures. So I'm going to start with a quarter teaspoon of my MA60 or TA61 thermophilic starter. Now, The other reason to add it, add it when the temperature is about 70 degrees as well, uh, as you're raising the temperature of your milk, is, is because these, these starter cultures have to kind of rehydrate before you get them in, uh, rehydrate a little bit before you stir them in. Okay, now we're going to go with our mesophilic starter, MM100, and I'm using both the Dansko uh, starter cultures. Which is to me is the better choice for uh, people like me, the home, you know, just a home cheese maker. Uh, the, uh, instead of making your own starter culture, um, I just go with the freeze-dried starter cultures. Now, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of lipase. I add my calcium chloride last, obviously, because it's the liquid that I'm adding, so always good to add the liquid last. Powdered ingredients ahead of the liquid. There's a quarter teaspoon of lipase powder. Now, I'm going to let this, I'm going to cover this, or I'm going to add my calcium chloride. Cover this back up in a few minutes. I'm going to give it about well, after five minutes. I'm going to give it a stir. Uh, that's to stir in the uh, starter culture that will have rehydrated. And then um, after that, we're going to wait for the temperature to come up about 94 degrees. We're going to take it off and put it in the place that it can maintain its temperature. And then what we're going to do is uh, let it culture for an hour and a half. Okay, I have that in. 
So five minutes, I'm going to stir this in, put it in the place to culture. After 90 minutes is when I'm going to restart this video so you can see me adding the rennet, stirring that in, and then we're going to go ahead and cut the curd after 20 minutes and then uh, get it into the press. Oh, and the pepper that we're going to use this time is a red pepper, uh, an Aleppo pepper, that uh, crushed Aleppo pepper. So it's got a really great smell, and that's the kind of pepper I'm going to use. You can use any kind of pepper you want to in this pepper jack cheese, uh, or this pescado papado. And I'm going to call this, since I'm not in the Tuscany region of Italy, but in the Annapolis area of Maryland, and we're going to call this Toscano Papado di Annapoli. Uh, so we're going to make this, and I'm going to use the Aleppo pepper. I've made this with black pepper. I've made this with crushed red pepper. I've made this with rehydrated Plavano peppers. Any kind of these peppers is really good. Um, so just to pick a, a pepper of your choice, you can make it hot, you can make it uh, mild. Your choice in what kind of pepper you use. All right, thank you.